right, we're back on the black 67 Mustang today because we're going to be tuning this engine to try to get rid of the dead miss it has. We're going to go through all of that, show you how to set up your tune, how to run the tune, and hopefully how to make this thing run better right now. All right, so we are going to go ahead and pull the spark plugs out of this. We already know that we have a problem uh, with a couple cylinders, at least from last week. So because of the uh, awesome alternator wiring, and you're supposed to do this anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove the negative battery terminal because I don't feel like getting zapped today, which is normally what happens when I mess with the ignition systems. All right. So I'm just gonna pull this spark plug out and show you the gap on it. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna check our gap with a little tool here. <laughs> Uh, we are right at 20,000 spark plug gap. Stock HEI GM is typically 35 to 45 thousandths. So we are way too tight. So we're going to go ahead and adjust this up a wee bit. All right, and right there we are at 35 thousandths. You can see that is a much bigger gap, and that should get a lot more spark in the hole. So we're going to go through all these plugs set all the gaps to 35 thousandths and see if we see anything wild. So you can either do this one at a time or you can pull multiple plugs out and just keep them in order. Uh, the plugs don't really matter what hole they go back into, but it's nice to keep reference so you know this one was really bad, that one was good, and just keep that in mind for future spark plugs. Now what I want you to do though is always check with the manufacturer of the distributor you have in your car. We happen to have the Davis uh, HEI system in this car, but if you have a DuraSpark or you have a Protronix, you're going to want to know what they recommend for spark plug gap, and that's going to be really important for good performance on your engine. Typically on a Ford, if you're running a dual point or a single point distributor, your gap is usually around 0.16, um, and that's going to be typical, but again, Check the service manual to make sure, and if you don't have a service manual, you can find this information on forums and places like that. Always make that check before you go in and do what we're doing right now, because now it wasn't done before, and we're having to do it. All the plug wires are reattached, and we are ready to go. We're now going to start the thing up and see what we get. Every time you make a change, always go back in and start the engine up see what's happened. You may not be done yet, so to speak, but it gives you a chance to know if you've made any progress. We're hoping we've made some progress. All right, I'm gonna jump in, see if we can get it to start. We do have the battery reconnected. That's pretty good, no accelerator. Still got a little bit of a miss, but I don't know if that's actually in the engine or it could be coming from a couple of different things. We don't know what the timing is on this thing, that's what we're going to assault next. If it starts right up and it runs. Still got that stumble on acceleration, but I think that may be a carburetor problem. If you hear that, that kind of thing right there is typically an accelerator pump issue. We'll check that out. Still doesn't like that. This is still there. All right, we're going to shut it down, keep it a little cold, and then we're going to start working on the timing. I'm going to talk real briefly about uh, vacuum tuning with a car like this. You're going to want to try to find manifold vacuum. Usually on most of these cars, there will be a vacuum tree on it. And what you'll want to be able to do is to take that, unplug a line, or if it has a cap on it, uncap the line, and plug your vacuum gauge into that port. And sometimes you may run into issues like with the Buick Nailhead V8. Some of the early Nailheads actually don't have any vacuum ports on the intake manifold at all. And at that point, I would say I would probably go after a timing light tune rather than a vacuum gauge tune. I personally prefer tuning with a vacuum gauge like we're doing today, which is why we're doing this. But you can do it with a timing light as long as you're sure that your timing marks and your harmonic balancer are in the right spot. Uh, and even then, you can just get a good basic by ear tune by listening to the way the thing runs. So, without further ado, I'm going to put the vacuum gauge on this thing and we're going to get started. Alright, so as you can hear, this thing runs like crap now. Uh, we've actually, we actually off camera went through and tuned it up a little bit and got it to plane out so we know that the engine itself is good. 
but we went back in and bugged it, knocked timing out of it, messed with the idle jets, just to bug it so you guys can hear that again. So that's the reason that it sounds a little bit worse now. All right, so I've got a distributor wrench here and a vacuum gauge. We're going to use this to actually put timing into the engine and do tuning on it. Uh, we're not sure what the harmonic balancer is set up as, if the timing marks are right on it. So we're just gonna go off the vacuum gauge because it is a very clear indicator of engine health. So I'm going to loosen up the distributor and then we're gonna fire the engine back up. And we're gonna move the distributor until we get the most vacuum out of it. Uh, and then we're gonna back it off just a little bit so it's not a hard start issue. And then we're gonna go after the carburetor, rinse, repeat, go back and forth until you get the most vacuum as possible throughout the whole uh, system. And also, if you can find one of these one piece ones, you can get two piece distributor wrenches from an auto parts store, uh, but they like to drop off as soon as you get them to right about here. And then they fall on the fan drive and they go flying, normally right at you. All right, so that is loose now. I'm gonna have Jeff fired up and we will start messing with the timing. Also hold the distributor when it fires up because they do have a tendency to torque. So I'm going to turn, and you can hear the RPM coming up, and the vacuum comes up as well. So as you can see, I'm turning the distributor right now, and it's not moving the gauge at all. So I'm going to back it off just a little bit. We're now down to 20. Bump it to 21. All right, and it's not going up any further from there. All right, so that's holding steady at 21 inches of vacuum now. So we're gonna go through carburetor adjustments next to get more vacuum out of it. And we're just gonna fiddle each one until we're right where we wanna be. Already sounds better. All right, now what I'm gonna work on is the actual carburetor settings. You have idle adjustment screws on these Holly carburetors. They're typically on the metering plate here, one here and one on this side. This one has what they call four corner idling. So there are screws on the back metering plate as well. You'll want to start off with one and a half turns out from the putting it all the way in against the metering block setting. So in other words, you'll turn this in. So here the idle change. That's all the way up against the uh, seat. And you're going to come out one and a half turns. So that's one half, one, and a half. Already this thing has planed out with just one of these done. Now I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. One half, one and a half. Now I'm a little short of one and a half on this because of how nice this thing's turning out on idle. Now with the back metering plate setups like this one has, you do the same thing. It's a one and a half turn as your base point. You'll also want to be doing this when the engine is hot. So one half. One. All right, now you hear the idle dropping down. That's not happy. So I'm going to do one turn on that one. All right, we're now sending about 22 and a half inches of vacuum. You'll notice that the needle has pretty much stabilized. That tells me that we're pretty good where we're at. Now I'm going to back the idle itself off a little bit to see what we get with that. Now you'll notice that the idle's burbling a little bit down in the lower setting. You want to be idling around 600 to 700 RPM on one of these carburetors. Unfortunately, the tack, <laughs> the tack inside has quit working. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put my tack on here because we have to, with this DUI ignition, it makes it a lot harder to, to hook up so that you can run the tack unless you do a dedicated tack wire. Now what it's going to be a matter of is just going in and working the tune. I don't 
don't think I can get much happier than where we are right now. Our idle is fairly uh, steady on the vacuum gauge. I'm not crazy about where the idle is actually sitting, but I'm all the way off the stop. In other words, it doesn't have anywhere it can go for a lower idle setting. And I don't know whether that's some kind of obstruction because the carburetor is mounted directly to the intake or what. But compared to where we started, we have a very nicely idling engine. Now there is one other problem on this carburetor that we're gonna deal with right now. The reason we're having a problem with it stumbling whenever we uh, blip the throttle is because <laughs> the accelerator pump actuator arm is incredibly loose. There should not be any uh, looseness between this arm and the actuator itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up until this nut, or until this bolt right here is sitting on but not uh, pressing the arm itself. So what you'll need is a 3 8 inch combination wrench and I like to use these. And we're just going to open that sucker up. Back it out just a little bit. There's actually a measurement, but I couldn't find it uh, in my looking around. All right, that should do what we need it to do. I'm going to start it up, and we're going to see what we get. That's without putting any accelerator into it, other than that little blip I gave it when I was checking the accelerator pump. She's happy now. I'm a little worried about that alternator, but uh, everything else seems to be fine. The alternator is making some really freaky noises, but that's because it's being overdriven right now. We're going to talk about that in another episode. Um, I really wish that I could get that to pull down to a good, solid low idle, but that's as low as I can get it to go. So. There really isn't anything else to do here. I mean, we have a well-operating carburetor. Uh, we've got good throttle response so far. The last thing you would want to do is obviously take it out for a drive and see what it does. And that's when you're going to start listening for things like pinging and things of that nature. We uh, let it heat soak for a little bit. And if you're heat soaking it and it's really slow to start, it kind of makes a rump, rump on startup, that means you've got too much timing in it and you need to back the timing out a little bit. All right, so uh, that's really basically it at this point. Cam may have a couple of more items he wants to talk about in the closeout, but as far as I'm concerned, we've done everything you need to do to make this bad boy run like a top. And I'm just not wanting to give it back to him now because this is really starting to turn into a nice little car. All right, so I'm going to show you how to find a vacuum leak if you think your engine has one. We're at 23 inches of vacuum at idle, so we don't believe this has a vacuum leak at all. If you have high RPM and you can't control it at idle, that's typically a vacuum leak. Uh, we think this might be putting too much timing in at idle because the vacuum advance, other stuff, it's running good enough right now that we're not really going to mess with it. But to find intake leaks, you can use carb cleaner. And the way you do that is you just go and spray the intake surfaces where the gaskets meet. If, it, if the RPM changes like this, if it does that when you spray the gasket, that's because it just sucked that into the intake and caused the RPM to change. The other way to do it is to put your hands over the primaries if you have a four barrel, and you'll see the vacuum gauge shoot up and it'll stall the engine as well. So if you can stall your engine like that, that means all the air is coming through the carburetor, not around the gaskets. So we are good to go. And you can also hot test the timing like this. Perfect. You know what? If he ain't happy with that, I don't even know what to tell him. Yeah, it's planed out perfect. I always giggle when they do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at that car, if we, if someone were that didn't know anything about cars, was buying this 67, they yep. would have walked on it. Yeah. Because uh, of how it ran. This is the auction special. <laughs> in my yeah, mind. I mean, and, and like I said, you know, <laughs> somebody walking up buying this thing is going to look at it and go, mm, nah, listen to how it runs. Yeah. And listen to it run now. Yeah. No accelerator to start. No womp womp when it starts. Nothing. It's just, just happy. Yep. Just It's there. a happy little clam. And I mean, 
I am just blown away. Every time we do something like this, we don't do enough of these in my opinion mm -hmm. sometimes, but it's like I'm blown away by the difference you can make just with simple couple tools. Couple screws. Couple mm -hmm. screws yep. and some simple tools. It's just amazing. Well, folks, that's our show for this week. What I'd like for you to do is go out and um, check out our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom where we sit down and we talk about tech items and things like that. You'll also get access to me through the telephone and through email. Please don't call me before 9 a.m. and don't call me after 9 p.m. Business hours. That's the <laughs> rules. <laughs> if I don't pick up the phone, it's because I'm doing something else and I can't answer the phone right then. Sometimes these things happen. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. We do these videos every week. We have Auto Rest and Manual Mechanic, and we put up a ton of content that is all how-to like this. We're trying to get 100,000 subscribers before the close of the year. I'm going to say that because it's just it's not so depressing as going and saying. Loose goals. <laughs> you didn't mention the end of what year? That's right. <laughs> the end of a year. <laughs> We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. Um, and finally, do me a favor, love on each other, like each other, treat each other nice, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto, Resto Mod. Mod. Have a great week. I really want to go for a drive, but I'm almost scared to, because I don't have a tag on it. <laughs> and you're going to want one after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really feeling like, man, this is getting nice. And we get the AC working, mm -hmm. we got power steering, power disc brakes. She's a nice little ride. Yeah, a little bit of rust repair. We could be, we could be months and months on this car if we really want to. We could, Hmm. So you're talking yourself into it now. I don't even have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob Oswalt's got one sitting in the shadow. Mm. 67 See, hardtop. You already know where to find where one. Where one's at. <laughs> I'm just causing myself more and more trouble. See ya.